libation. So everybody sort of shared that. Bring the, the camera a little bit down. The camera is fine. Ah. You, you cut you cut Linda's head I, off. I, I cut it off. Hold on, hold on. Go back, Linda. I know he really wants to do that in Go life. But it's <laughs> not gonna happen. Okay, hold on, I hold move, on. I move the computer. If he if he cuts your head off, I'll revenge you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time you stood up for me, Ross. The only time. Please. Okay, so um Okay. Yeah, that's better. All right. So, um, so we all sort of seem to have had a fairly lovely day. The ancestors are looking down on us. We had fairly good weather, no snow. We had sunshine in Canada. It seemed like everybody else had some kind of sun. Um, so I think we should be thankful and grateful for that. Um, and as we pour libations, um, we're going to ask for the guidance and the wisdom of the ancestors who went before us. And for those whose lives were lost in the Middle Passage, um, as we meet weekly in this book club for the study of Yurugu, um, and we particularly ask that the ancestors hold and guide us during our study um, period today. So as we pour libations, please keep in mind yourself of ancestors to whom to you embody the principles that we're studying in um, Yurugu, and also the principles that we're going to for at this time. So as we pour libations, the response, you're going to say Ashe, so be it, as Eugene pours uh, to the statements that we're going to make. All right. So for all who dare to define, defend, and develop our interests as people, we say Ashe. Ashe. For ancestral land, we say Ashe. Ashe. For our people then and now. Ashe. 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 For our children and those yet unborn. Ashe. 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 For Kawaida, Unguzo Saba, and Matt, we say Ashe. 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 For, for the systems and views, so, sorry, systems of views and values which give identity and purpose to our lives, we say Ashe. 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 For the new world we struggle to build, and for the continuing struggle to reconstruct and reconnect our history and humanity in our own image and words according to our needs, we say, Ashe. Ashe. We ask the ancestors to drink heartily and quench your thirst. Ashe. 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 So we're going to finish by saying, I'm going to say Monikasa, and Monikasa means it is finished, it is done. Ashe. 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 So I just wanted to add before we go on, I, I chose this form of libation. It's not the traditional way we do it, but I chose it because I'm not sure that everybody really understands what libations mean, what the significance of libations are. I don't know. You may know, but I don't know. Um, and then also the statements that we made are made specifically around this book that we're studying because we're doing, we're trying to get the ancestors to guide us in our study of what the book is teaching us, but also how we actually carry ourselves in the world afterwards. And the ancestors are with us all the time. So they're there to guide us and help us through this. So we're pulling on their spirits to help us study this book in the way that we should be studying it as African people. Ashley. 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 <laughs> And, and they truly touched Sunshine today. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, Sunshine, we could continue with what you were talking about. I mean, yeah, like Lindis well said, you know, when you read that, I'm thinking, is this something like, is it the traditional, like, I didn't know there was a traditional, you know, and I, that's what I was thinking. Is this the traditional talk that you talk for the libation or did it's you one, did you draft this this one one of my elders gave me the format this is not how i was taught libation but depending on the situation we're in and actually it's quite it's interesting because we're on the chapter two religion right and a lot of what we are discussing is the fact that a lot of the asili the european asili cuts out spirit, right? Everything is an object. Yeah. So and what- the connect, 
and disconnect you disconnect. from the whole, you know. So the, the reason, initially when I was taught um, about libation, it was a bit scary, heebie-jeebie, and oh my God, <laughs> ghost. And, but really, when the interesting, for me, interesting thing for me was when I was um, shown how to do libations, we had to do ourselves <laughs> with a certain format. And initially, it was learning it. And Eugene can attest, because he was with me going through this process. And when I actually had to seriously do a libation, after the first line, all of a sudden, everything became serious. When you do it, you actually become heavy, right? Um, and you start, when you're doing it seriously, you start to understand the, the, the gravity and the seriousness and the seriousness of calling on the ancestors to guide you through. And one of the reasons we do libations is to ground us. So we don't come into this all over the place, right? You, you, yeah. you come into it, it sort of sets the tone and you move on. Sort of how people go to church and do prayers, but this yeah, is our yeah. prayers, right? Med like meditation, it puts you yeah. in that, yeah. tunes yeah. you up I'm, for I'm, serious work or serious... Yeah. And this is serious endeavor. work. Yeah. Yeah. This is serious work. So I actually felt we could not do this without having libations at the beginning of it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a way of centering whatever you're doing, uh, uh, getting you in the same. Everybody's kind of in the same on the same page, mm -hmm. and and you yeah. know. And we did we together. discussed it. We discussed it for quite a while, actually, mm -hmm. what, whether to do it or not. Um, and you know, we felt like it's something important, and so we modified it for this particular um, program that we're doing because libations could go for a long time and um, yeah. we're very limited in the amount of time that we have. And and also we we wanted to respect people's beliefs. We didn't, un we weren't sure, you know, how people would react to it. Um, I mean, I knew libations since the hood, you know, like little kid, we, we, we illegally drinking beer and alcohol and we're like yo tap it tap it and then if you we would not open that bottle if you didn't tap it like <laughs> like the bottom and the top and this is for the homies who not here and so that was our ignorant way of doing it but it was also serious yeah you know yeah. and and it just then all of a sudden you get educated you'd be like wow and so you see the connection from the be mm -hmm. from history to now and so we do a, a lot of things we do now we don't understand. It's from something from back then. Mm -hmm. the start. We don't understand the wisdom of it mm -hmm. or the idiosity of it, of the history of it, right? Mm -hmm. And I, so I, remember, I was telling Ra in, in the Caribbean, well, in Trinidad, people open the serious drinkers, and these are like when I say, I mean, probably alcoholic serious, right? Breakfast, breakfast um, <laughs> bottle. Yeah. <laughs> but even if they are opening a fresh bottle of rum, and they could be as drunk as a skunk. And they go, let's pour one for the ancestors. And I used to think that was just drunk talking. Yeah. But when yeah. you know what libations is and you you connect with things that have lost the connection over the years, I go, they may not even know why they're doing it, but they used to pour one for the ancestors. But yeah. it's like, you no, know, they still do it. and they, they still, still do it. it. But I don't even think they understand where that yeah. phrase came from. Mm -hmm. Right? So we're bringing back the meaning behind some of the things that we do and we take for granted and we have no idea that there's a deeper meaning and a deeper connection. You know what? I think one one of the, maybe we should like plan like one of the, from seven to three, you could actually talk about, because you mentioned Quaidu and what's the other one? Um, Unguza, Ma'at, yeah. Ma'at, Kawaida, and Mafa. Yeah, and those two things yeah. just, may, we probably should have a talk about it around between seven and 7 30 you know yeah so like yeah. that people in the group have a fuller meaning of what those things are mm -hmm. if, if the group wants it we could do it yeah i mean that's it, it's, it's not even a question of why i mean we're doing libations mm -hmm. and so it's like a necessity to understand what we're doing mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. but but um sunshine Mm. You're gonna run the meeting today. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, let me not. Let me not. Let me not set you up like that. All right. 
Thanks, bro. If, if you, it, can, you can calm now. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, now, if it's Decenia, Decenia, I'm going to bully Decenia to do it. Uh, she's spontaneous she's good on her feet like uh, like read you know she's used to the Hebrew I was like, like I had to get prepared <laughs> like, okay what questions he, is he probably going to ask me to read <laughs> <laughs> you act like if it was me I think some other people had you reading too. yeah yeah hmm. oh hold on give me a second let me admit my wife back in um yeah so uh any questions or any um, statements, or do you want to? Linda, you you're muted, so I don't. If you're talking, I don't know. Veronica's coming. Hold mm -hmm. on. If she doesn't come in, at eight, I'll call her. No, she's coming. She's um. She should oh. be. Oh, she's there. There you go. Hey. Hey, hey Veronica. Hey. 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 Good night. I Veronica, Veronica, I don't like saying Veronica, so I'm gonna have to say it with some meaning, like some meaning. I say Veronica, you know, it's like <laughs> it's sexier, Veronica, you know, it's like <laughs> Veronica, right. Veronica. It, got, it, has, it sounds like the it, mafia calling your name, Veronica. Veronica. It's, it's, like, it's like adding that adobo on it, you know, like <laughs> okay, okay. you know, Veronica is like. White mm -hmm. rice and you know <laughs> white rice. <Okay>. Boronica <laughs> is that Spanish spicy rice, you know. Uh, got All right. I'm liking that. <laughs> it's like can you imagine jerk chicken without the seasoning? Like ugh. Okay, okay. Boronica is jerk jerk chicken, like you know, like All right. but um for we were just we were just discussing um part of uh, the libation and, and um okay. we're thinking of possibly having someone dis discuss the libation and the two points that i we talked about the two um what Quedu was the other one mafa mafa and kawaida yeah those two no, just for for educational purposes since we constantly are doing libations mm -hmm. and um but let's get to the book. Hey, Sunshine, you got any questions or statements? Because you've been hot. Yeah. Sunshine was right hot, hot today. All right. All right now. I'm good. She, let's, she, let's get into it. She nearly became the person. <laughs> she nearly became the person to run to me. I was about to take a I was about to be like laid back. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. <laughs> but do anybody have any statements or anything that they want to share any thoughts, anything written down. You know how we do in this meeting. Oh, I don't even have to pull up the book. I just go like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, Senia, I know you a brainiac, so she's a hidden nerd, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, more, I don't more, have, really have any kind of questions. The but more I get to know, she's nerdy, yo. So don't yeah. don't, don't let the <laughs> hair wrap fool you or anything. <laughs> I do, I do get into this, and I like study the history and different things. So I was more interested that she tied in this time of just like the Crusades, Constantine, and everything like that. So I don't have any questions, but yeah. Any statements? <laughs> Um, Any, anything that you deem important? Yeah, I would say that this is really opening my eyes on just the different things that um, they actually put in place for their Sealy. So it's kind of like even in the future, when you start to get into their doctrine of discovery and then discovering different lands and what they deem empty lands they say the same exact thing like god embarked me on this journey to mm -hmm. save the rest of the world and make them christians and everything like that so this shows like the origin of where that first statement kind of came from and they all used it through manifest destiny and everything. it's almost so. like there's no time right there's no period of time yeah. there's always <laughs> The circle. Hey, um, what about 
What about you, Ninyami? You you always come up with something deep. Ninyami don't got his hat on. What happened? Peace, peace. I'm just chilling, kind of relaxing. Yeah. The, the wifey told you you can't wear your hat anymore in the house. No. no. She, 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 she <laughs> said I need to have it on. Uh oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I better be careful. I might light some fire over there. <laughs> No, but did you get beat up um after the conversation from last week? Yeah, a little bit, a little uh, bit. Somebody <laughs> shaking. Hold on, there's like there's a conflict of information. She's shaking her head no. Well, who can say a little bit? Of course, she's gonna say no. She beat me up. Uh, do, do I do I need a call? Do I need to call like a one hot one eight hundred hot number for abuse? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said something about. Uh, Mythology and Orishas, and she said, "We gonna have to talk to Ra. What is Ra? Oh, uh oh, <laughs> no! Listen, <yep>. what? <laughs> he was no. last night. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. And Yami, what did you say? Don't look, don't look for allies. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to hear too. I want to hear. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure your wife remembers. Okay. Oh, okay. Break it down. Let's hear. Let's hear the argument. It, it was some show she was telling me about. That they're using American gods. Oh, American. Oh, I've been watching that too. I knew. See. Thank you. Yes. And I say it's more. It's more philosophical. I'm more historical, so I don't really. I don't really get into it too much. And she said, oh, you got a Eurocentric worldview. So what, why would you say that? No, he said something about mythology. Look, I was just happy the part that they're they're even talking about it. Just a mention. Well, well, they're really misrepresenting it big time. Well, that... Uh, but yes. it's interesting in the sense that... Yes. of To see how they are viewing it, right? Yes. And they You know, you notice the, the black character about revolution that got rid of him, right? Yeah, of course. Okay. What show? Okay. What show are you talking about? The um American, American gods. gods. Yeah. Oh, American uh, gods. Is that, is that on Prime. Movie? If you have Prime, I don't know where yeah. else they do it. Oh. Now the thing, the thing is, the thing is, is that Hulu, yeah. It, it, I have to agree with your wife a little bit, bro. Of course. No, no, no. no, <laughs> no. <laughs> because because I'm a, because the thing is like you like you know how you she appreciates the philosophical part of it and you appreciate the historical. Yes. I'm an individual that deals with both, right? And so to to be holistic, you have to deal with both. Yes. So y'all both have some are if she if, if he's a Wazunga thinker, so are you. Yes. Because you're separating, right? Yes. You're creating a dichotomy between y'all two. And so the 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 more, I mean, it, it, I like it because you guys are discussing it with different perspective and all, but don't think one is better than the other. Don't think like philosophy is not necessary because you you live by a particular philosophy, right? When when people even like in the, in the in the Western sense, when you get a PhD, what is a PhD? People don't understand what a PhD is. What PhD stands stand for? Anybody know? A doctorate of philosophy. Yes. I don't know that. Yeah. So so no, I, I, no, I understand it, and I understand from her spot. I said it's more geared for her style. No, she likes. She's probably sci-fi oriented. Well, she and you do documentary. You, you, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm more story, especially um, when it comes to like our culture and the different spirituals. And he's like, okay, what's the historical? Like, where's the heart that? And I which, appreciate that. Which, which, which they're both equally important. Yeah, and I appreciate that. So we did come to understanding that time because we're talking about as above, so below. Like, like facts, America. facts, most facts have no meaning. So it, it disconnects the, it connects the actual fact from the observer, right? So it you you see a fact and you the one who put meaning into the fact. Why, how are you going to use that actual fact? And so her, like, he wants to know, okay, what's the fact? 
she want to define the meaning behind the fact. Yeah. You looking at it, where did the fact come from? Let's 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 look at the study. Let's re, let's let's do the experiment again to make sure that fact is correct. She's like, well, if that's true, how does that connect us to the rest of the universe? Which is healthy for both of y'all to be like that. But it has to, you can't devalue one over the other. Like, you know, I I will argue a male point of view, right? Because I'm a male. So I'm gonna argue a male point of view. She's yeah. gonna she will argue a female point of view because she's a female. That's a point of view. But there's no hierarchy in that sense. Right. Both right. point of view are important. We gotta define our universe based on those understanding. And, and we did, because she asked me, I, I had to have a thesis behind what I was saying. And I explained ancient Kemet, you know, the, the pyramids were built because they looked at the Milky Way, the, the, the three stars of Orion. And they built as above, below. They brought both their spiritual aspect and they manifested their spiritual aspect. Yeah. So they did. The both of them manifested their culture, yeah. and so that's they, how we. we they we had meaning. They weren't just building off of just straight ego, like yeah, it normally. Yeah, told. there was meaning behind what they were doing. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, I was saying about the show, and so we did come to a conclusion. I'm just saying, oh, uh, she just brought you up in that, that conversation. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> The, the, the important thing is, even though you're two different sides of the discussion, you can actually, I think that the point we should stress here is that you're actually having a discussion. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. many people do not have the discussion. And many people want to be right and the other person wrong. And that is so terrible. Right? You're not, that is, it is so terrible because it, it there, the discussion is what is, as the meaning, right? Like you guys are like laughing or getting upset because you're having an experience, right? And, it, and it's beautiful that that's happening. And it's funny that she even mentioned my name. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's hilarious because what she she kind of plays sneaky, right? She, kinda, she, <laughs> she 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 did exactly like we should not do: create a dichotomy, right? And like <laughs> let me bring this outside. She thought she was gonna reinforce her point of view using me. <laughs> In the group, that's some dirty play. You know? <laughs> Not understanding that by you saying what you said, Ninyami, and creating that, the, she also created it, it, it. You know, but it's interesting, right? Because it, it's just so funny. Like, um, <laughs> but I, I, could, I, I understand it. Kimmit talks about the the compliment of the opposite. It's almost like there's this struggle, but then they both but work together. There's no need to separate. I don't understand the need to separate things like that. I don't understand why you can't be philosophical and scientific at the same time. Right, yeah. It, 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 it doesn't make any sense that to separate them, you know? Like, and I, I think we gotta be careful with the book because she's not saying not to be rational or scientific like she's not saying she's not arguing against that she's arguing against devaluing and creating a dichotomy of the spirit the meaning that's what you know the emotional aspect the intuitive aspect you know, and they try to use, they use the brain as the example, right? As the, they try to say right and left, but really just put, don't forget about like right and left, but in the brain, you have these, they consider them polarizing and they're really not polarizing. I don't want to be 100% rational all the time because I know you can't be creative that way. Right. You know, there's a, I, I recognize the importance of all of it. So so I got in a way I, I have to step back, observe and see, like, even if I'm observing myself, like step back and observe, be, be self-conscious. Because we talk about consciousness like that's the goal. The goal is beyond that, to be self-conscious, be 
conscious of your conscious, right? Yeah. To be able to be mindful, to be mindful yeah. all the yeah. time. Yeah. To think mm -hmm. about your thoughts, mm -hmm. you know. Actually, it's interesting because I don't know if people, I don't know if in the States you guys are hearing this term mindfulness. Do you hear that a lot these days because of COVID? And well, well, I, the Star Wars kind of brought that out a lot. So it's been in the atmosphere for a long time. Right. So now in the rehab world, there's this big thing of mindfulness therapy. And personally, I want nothing to do with it. And I exactly. know why I want nothing to do with it because mindfulness is the new buzzword. Everybody's having mental health issues because they're locked in because of COVID and all. So they're playing this up a lot as a well, way to deal with it's the an mental excuse. health issues. It's right? an excuse. No, no, let me finish. Let yeah, me finish. I'm making a point. I'm not disagreeing. I'm just making a point. So my I issue- I have got nothing to do with it though. Exactly, because I've been hearing this and I'm going, what the no, hell? No, I, I agree. I would agree with her. Go ahead, go ahead. No, so I actually had somebody talk to me about it. And then I don't know what I was reading, but in the again, it's the same thing. What they're doing now is the objective mindfulness. Right. Mindfulness in reality involves spirituality. And it's sort of like when we do libations, we bring the ancestors in and we have our spiritual component to what we do. That's what grounds us. What they're doing is they are teaching like, okay, meditation, but the, mind, the spiritual part of it has been taken out of what they call mindfulness therapy. And that is the bit that I didn't know yeah, okay. that sat badly with me. And now I know why it sits badly because it's taken out of context to make it a monetary project and you need it. Yeah. And, and I think it's this. more nefarious than just monetary, right? Well, other things too. No, I, 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 let me quickly explain because what really is they're saying is that, that people are feeling bad. Now people been feeling bad before COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is that COVID-19 is breaking the camel's back mm -hmm. and it's bringing it forward. Right. And so for them, they're trying to blame They're Again, they're blaming COVID-19 for it. They're not saying we need to restructure our society to mm -hmm. have a more meaningful, rich for life before we become savages in this, like, which we already are, but you know, it becomes even worse. You'll be like Mad Max, you know? Mm -hmm. And so they, they're they using it for money, but it's more nefarious. They're, they're using it to make, to like not lay blame or create changes to mm -hmm. deal with it. So what, what it is, then the healthcare system that even is, is, it has the same problem in the healthcare system, right? So it's, it's, it's about, the physical body, no spiritual, like they have done studies where being spiritual even helps in the healing process. They have done studies. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so they don't, they're not trying to change. They're resisting change. They're constantly resisting change. And what COVID-19 is doing is putting it straight up in their face, straight up in their nose and they can smell it and and they're they're resisting and so like when we like in the 90s they talked we were talking about racism in the 90s and then they create this multiculturalism which is another way of deflecting they're using this asian attack as a deflection as well right so what you do is you split the attention and so nobody's really focusing on the yeah. the real big picture mm -hmm. It, it, it's like a distraction, in other words. Yeah, yeah. And so they really don't want to change and they're, they're really maintaining power. And I, I mean, I haven't gone to the book yet because we are discussing the book. Yeah. So I have a statement. Yes, ma'am. Let's get back to the book. Religion and spirituality. I'm going to save you a little bit of a read, Dulcinea. Take a rest for a minute. And... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> At the top of page 110, spirituality, spirituality rests on the conception 
of a sacred cosmos that transcends physical reality in terms of significance and meaning. At the same time, spirituality enables us to apprehend the sacred in our natural, ordinary surroundings. They become elements of a symbolic language. The definition of religion. Religion refers to the formalization of ritual, dogma, and belief, leading to a systemic statement of syntactically supra-rational tenets that may or may not issue from a spiritual conception of the universe. Most often it functions to sacralize a nationalistic ideology. Yep. Feedback and comments. Well, I think you should read the next paragraph as well because then yep. it, dif it differentiates scientism. Oh, okay. If I, if the next paragraph? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah. One, if one looks for a sense Sorry, Dil Senior, I didn't think I'd have to read all this. <laughs> I seem to be taking over. See, the this is actually what always happens to me. <laughs> I had it ready. <laughs> if, if one looks for a sense of the supernatural, the sacred or extraordinary in European culture, undoubtedly the only area of experience that approaches the religious in this sense is that of science. It is only what is considered to be science and scientific method that is regarded with the awe and humility that in other cultures represents the religious attitude. Scientism as such is not the focus of this immediate discussion, but rather the institutionalized set of ideas and practices that Europeans refer to as religion. Scientism will enter the discussion only as it functions normatively to produce the models or paradigms of European theology. That's why they accept the Big Bang. There you go. And it's interesting. I always talk about not being religious, but being spiritual. Not really understanding the gravity of what that means. Well, I mean, like, there's she has a way of explaining religion in a in a Western framework. I don't know if you notice, but in in one of the section, when we talk about Judaism, she leaves out Kabbalah. She separates Kabbalah, and there's a reason behind why she separates Kabbalah. Now, we haven't gone there yet, but, you know, we, I still want to discuss this, this section here. So, do anybody got anything to say about this, this section? Or whatever um, Lindis has read? I think it's just a, a, a differentiation she makes as to what spiritualism or spirituality um, she's kind of differentiating it from religion um, and you know well it's what formulates their um, their culture right mm -hmm. so that's so she's she's continuing to explain the formulation of European culture now this is like she puts this in order so this is before the platonic influence mm -hmm. i i find it was it was necessary to um for the europeans really mindset to really uh institutionalize um this their idea of what uh religion was mm -hmm. because again it would support their uh assailant um, to have power and control over. And so, um, other, and I, she mentions this as you go along as well too, that um, other non-European um, uh, societies and cultures already had concepts, right, that related to exactly what the Europeans um, thought. However, they didn't utilize it in the same manner. And so they established this as if it was something new or something unique, but it wasn't. 
actually what they did was separated it away from the other beliefs, the other cultures that were there so that they could reinforce their silly um, for the control and having power over others. So anything that they could um, pull together and, and remove from that, because we were, we're spiritual, Afrocentric thinking was um, spirituality. And I mean, we connected everything. There was not a separation there. And um, the more that they could uh, separate anything that had to do with connecting nature and, and the universe and, and including and being inclusive of all um, or uh, everything that stimulated us, the more that they could separate it, make, made them have more control. And they had to formalize it and institutionalize it so that they could support their beliefs. Yeah. In, in, in the book, she states that the influence of Plato helped in that formalization of and creating the, the, tam, the ta, Tamawazu and the Tamaroho, mm -hmm. right? That's how, mm -hmm. um, and this is how they created their Asili. It started um, legitimizing these, um, she says, legitimizing the European behavior. So they, they started rationalizing That's the word, yeah. their, 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 their actions. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I was just going to say in the platonic influence, they talked about religion becoming mono, what's the word? Monotheistic. Monotheistic. So they, they're yeah. setting the scene yeah. to build should we should we talk about that or that was a short that was short right hold on these are all short it was easy reading rock for yeah, it was <laughs> yeah so um people should have an easy time talking about it okay um point of view. so do anyone have anything to say about the platonic influence Any any um, good ideas coming from that? See what she's doing is she's in in this section she's talking about she's taking ideas from Plato's writings, right, to illustrate her point in terms of Plato's influence. All these books that um that she mentioned comes from Plato. Yeah, they um yeah, I was looking at that. They what about like anybody yeah, anybody recalls the idea in terms of moral and nature? Good and bad, remember like mm -hmm. justifying your acts. Yeah. This week I, I went back and trying to study Plato. Um, I mean, it was it was it was interesting. I'm still trying to figure out where he get where did he get his ideas from. Well, he he was trying to understand Kemet actually. Part of part of his um, part. Well, he has it. You know, you had Greek culture, right? And and so he was. Tr they were trying to like put something in place for themselves and they they like the, the republic is him trying to understand Egypt I want to say Egypt because at that time you know they kind of control that right and so um if you if you go to See, there's a lot of stuff before that, but it talks it talks here about the philosophy. Um Miss Willa. What page? The, 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 <laughs> la, the, la, the last paragraph 
right? Where it says, Diamond says that paragraph and it goes to 115. Okay. Well, hold on one second. Remember, like, they talk about monotheism before this section. So I'm um, hope, and you know, the more is the more issues of good and bad. Remember, they're creating the dichotomy, the yeah, separation. Could we, so. could we get a uh, like a, a better understanding of monotheism? It, monotheism is believing in one God. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The well, Abrahamic faith is. Well, technically, it's not monotheistic, but, you know, everything is one in most cultures, but but they they used to uh, separate, they used to say, oh, they're pagans, they have more than one God. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're like, oh, we're Christian, we, you know, we only have one God. So it's looked down upon. And so paganism was looked upon on because they, you know. For all the reasons you could think of. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, yeah, C can you read that part, please? Yes. So, okay. Diamond says that this tendency towards the integration of mental and emotional life and the development of the uh, exalted and positive ethical idea implies progress to the European mind and has become one of the, is it the shibboleths? Shibboleths. of European culture. But this is a slippery point. If one is unfamiliar with the mode of ancient philosophy, for the Kemites, ancient Egyptians, other Africans, and many contemporary non-European peoples, there is an authentic integration of science, philosophy, and religion. The difference between these two kinds of integrations is the one is that one reduces spiritual reality to matter, while the other understands spiritual reality as the fundamental integrative principle of all being. The European view results in the desacralization of the universe and by extension, the despiritualization of morality. Do you get, do you get that? Um, do that answer your question in some ways or? It, no, yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, I knew that. But when when I when I was studying it, the Western world doesn't say that. So th that that was my study. Where are they? Where they're, they're trying to say he got it from Socrates, really? They, they no, kinda... no, 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 no. This what she said. They always been like this since since they came out of the North. They've been like this. So if you read like like this is why she made in the other in the beginning she mentioned Iceman inheritance yeah uh -huh. which which deals with their develop how they develop how they came about right, right? right. It, and so it, they identify they immediately could identify with it and so these cultures in the in the north and northwest northeast some of the Asians they 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 coalesced into this understanding because it, it it resonated with them and so they were able to connect easy with it and so what plato did what what plato was doing he's an aristocrat right and he's arguing for this because he was one of the few educated ones right and remember they had they say they had democracy but really not everybody had the right to vote and stuff like that over there. So it wasn't a democracy. But it was a, more of a democracy than the United States. But but this, is, this has always been their way of thinking. What Plato is doing is he was starting to institutionalize it because he is an institutionalist, being an aristocrat. And so he was criticizing because there were people who were spiritual. I'm talking about Europeans. And so it was, you know, it was a, it's still a battle between them, you know, but the, the when, you, when we want to discuss the culture, it's never about the minority. It's always the generalization as a whole. 
these people, what they do, and that defines culture. Now, is there some people who understand spirituality in their group? Yes. And a lot of times they kill them off. <laughs> or you're 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 pressured into conforming. Right? And so they view that's why they view the separation of church and state as something rational. And so if you don't separate church and state then you're you, that's bad and because we believe we've been indoctrinated we'll we also say it's bad so they they bamboozle you with the freedom of religion but really that doesn't the that doesn't exist in america you know and so they'll say oh that that group over there, they're, they they don't allow freedom of religion, and now you look at them as they're they're beneath you, they're backwards. You know. So is she saying that he got his ideas, his understanding by studying his culture and contrasting it with Kimmy? No, no. What she's telling you, she's showing you the difference between African way of thinking and European ways of thinking. Because with the monotheism, see, this is where they start differentiating. And, you know, um, the Senia talked about it during our between 7, 7.30 when she mentioned like them creating manifest destiny and all those type of doctrines. Those are the things. Now you have good versus, like even when Bush was like the axis of evil, it allows you to separate yourself. So whatever happens to those people, whether they're innocent or not, like, there's innocent people being bombed and killed and we don't care because they're evil. And then, they, you know, they try to say, oh no, it's the government. But we know government is of the people no matter if it's a tyrant or not. And so people get killed, innocent children get killed. And so it's a way for us to create endless wars, right? And, and dominate and maintain power. It still has that power component behind it, you know? And so... Well, um, a, perfect, a perfect example is Bin Laden and how he was, vin victim, you know, he was vindicated as being this awful terrorist when really, didn't America... Huh? Not vindicated. Not been wrong word, wrong word. <laughs> but um, but he he was he he was trained in the U.S. and he did what the U.S. would have done to anybody else. But now he's taken their lessons and given it back to the to the um powers that be, and they don't like it. And now he's a terrorist. Well, he he was being supported by the United States. Mm -hmm. The United States created Al Qaeda to fight the Russians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And so and the family, the Bush family and the Al Qaeda family did business together for decades. Mm -hmm. So you got to understand this whole story, like Bin Laden now is set in the ocean and stuff like that. People, people don't a lot of people don't say they don't that 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 doesn't pass the smell test. Right. Like, mm. Oh, it's because they're going to martyr. Like, man, you know how many people y'all killed that they martyr? Y'all don't care for Bin Laden? <laughs> mm. Mm. So so that that one, you know, is a hard pill to swallow, <laughs> to believe that one. You know, yeah. I don't, I don't want to sound conspiratorial, but I do know history. See, there's a difference between putting two and two together and getting four versus 
what they're doing, put two and three together and getting four. Is there any other? I mean, she mentions she mentions a lot here. I don't want to just be the one explaining the whole thing. Um, I got the question for you. For us. Yeah, I got a question. I have to turn off my video because I have the PDF version of the book. Right. But is she trying to say that the um the ancient Egyptians or the came to the original religion before the white man came to like screw everything up and made us like how do I say this? Like before, before they flipped it and before the integration of the, 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 the European religion, the original religion was the, the Kemetic religion. No, and no, that's, that's not what she's saying. What she's saying is that Kemet and other African societies were able to integrate they didn't need they didn't find the need to separate science religion and all that they didn't that for them is it was a whole system philosophy science religion all that was all one thing you know it was understood that that part is the solution for the abutu families <laughs> understanding that those things are the same are like all together. Let me let me let me let me find the section there where it's okay. It says for the Kemites and other other Africans and many contemporary non-European people, there is an authentic integration of science, philosophy, and religion. So oh, the mixture of what well integration meaning is all intertwined and it was understood. Right. So that, that could help the Ubuntu family. <laughs> no more beating him up because we don't want to call the 1-800 number of abuse. <laughs> and, and so they remember in this part, she's emphasizing monotheism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because in this, in this time. section, in this section, she talks about this is going to lead to the next section when we talk about Judaism. Mm -hmm. um, when we're going into that section, um, one page 115, the third paragraph, mm -hmm. uh, Havelock's observation of the developmental relationship between the written media or literate mode of an objectification as dominant or preferred epistemological mode can be used to understand the uniqueness of European Judeo-Christian religious re religious tradition, mm -hmm. um, religion to be superior or worthy of civilized of the civilized had to be knowledge and have the nature of the eternal truth logic. This is my question here. It is written codification help to give it this character. And so it became European evidence of true religion. And then yeah, in writing it, writing it. Yeah. So basically like creating the Bible and the creation of the Torah they they started now being able to teach the mass it's no long it, it, we no longer need uh the priests in some ways right and, and and eventually it led to that splitting of the churches and stuff like that because nobody wanted to follow one and kind of democratize religion their religion but so because it's written in a bible or there's a script or yeah, the, the, that this is it this is the, uh, it's like if I no they thought it they made what they do is it's a circular argument that they make Europeans right let's say this is we're talking about this book 
And let's say she may have something here that maybe not not so well. But what I what I could say is, oh, but it's in the book. And if we read here, this is this is what it said. This is true. How are you gonna argue with the book? She knows what she's talking about. She's a PhD. And you like, so I'm making in a way, I'll be making a, a logical fallacy, right? Because I'm I'm using, I'm not using no evidence. Or anything. I'm using her. I'm book. using her authority okay. of her being a PhD and like she wrote it down. She broke it down, and then I could say, "Oh, you're not real. You you're not African centered. You want to be an Oreo." And so, I'm. These are all logical fallacies, right? Okay. And so this. So when they write it down, they can also now make the circular arguments. Right, and they'll be they could have something to point to as evidence because it's written. Because it's written, wait, is that is that kind of like when you say the pen is mightier than the sword? Yes, girl, you need you need to be running this thing, girl. <laughs> She's hot today. <laughs> it was a good chapter. You know what it, you, you know what it is. Cause she did, she did, she had time to relax and all that. It just, <laughs> she's just like on fire. <laughs> all right. <laughs> like, well, listen, you, you need to give me what you having. What kind of coffee you drinking? <laughs> no coffee at all. No coffee at all. <laughs> oh, we got a good brother here coming in. I think it's hey, sunshine's magic blanket. Yeah, her, her magic oh. blanket. <laughs> no, but it. yes, I mean everything, everything. No, but let, let, everything you said, sunshine, is on point. That's exactly when they said the pen is mightier than the sword. Because, it, I mean, remember the the ancient Kmites when you when a scribe wrote, he a scribe automatically had immortality because he written it, and they believe that's just that. Um, you know, she'll record it and be recorded and as above, so below, you know, in the heavens and on earth. Hello, um, Andrew. Andrew is a, a new person. Um, I've been trying to send him some information. He finally was able to get in. Uh, do, you have your, do you have your camera on? Uh, not yet. I'm on my phone right now. Okay, I'm okay. I'm just getting in. I'm tr and I'm um, just trying to get settled in. All right then. All so right. we'll, we'll continue. We'll continue discussing. When you get your camera up and running, we'll we'll come back to you. Yeah, well. So um. I, so I think, right in, I think um, once they had put it into the written word. I think that that really was the other effort to institutionalize their ideologies because yes. um, it is something now, like even today, that same writing is there, that same writing is used to reinforce their power. I mean, once they um, decided that they were going to uh, use this to um, make sure that all the rest of the world followed um, their ideology, then the written word became the way that they reinforced that they had the power, they had the control, they had, they were like sanctioned to be able to um, go and, um, you know, and, to be and, supremacist. And, and it and allows you, it allows you to create circular arguments, mm. right? Because it's not, I mean, even though like it, it allows you to even be more rational. Mm right to create this rationalize even th like ignore the observation and just go into the whole but rationalization it's more than a more appearance than reality though when yeah you yes 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 yeah. yes so you you're 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 creating a narrative yeah you know and some extent she's creating a narrative but hers is an analysis mm -hmm. right and she's making the argument. Um, any any other um, anybody want to say any other 
That's a good point, um, Sunshine. You rocking it today. Yeah, <laughs> you see, she's taking a <laughs> So shall you look tired now? All that energy you I I I, I, I exerted myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, like in the end, you know, she does talk about Plato on, on this section. Oh yeah, interesting. Self mover and the final cause. Remember the section in chapter one? Um, when, when, he, when she talks about cause, um, what is it called? It was it linear, li, li, something linear and cause. I forget the section. Hold on. Yeah, I think it was linear and cause or lineality, maybe. I don't remember the word. Oh, yeah, man, she's hot today. It's exactly that. Linearity and cause, scientism and logic. Yes. She's hot. Hey, nobody can tell me she hasn't been reading the book. <laughs> <laughs> so um, before we get to the Judaic heritage, Miss Wheeler, Can you see the, um, let me see, should we go? I was gonna say read um, the last paragraph, but let me take a look at this set. Second one. Your opinion for me, what did I just say? Yeah, read, a, read the last paragraph and then we'll go to Jude, Judaic heritage. So it says, Plato's influence was most heavenly felt in the early formulative work of Augustine and Aristotle's influence was directly manifested in Aquinas and the scholastics in their conceptions of the self uh, moving mover and of final cause. But most importantly, their laborish attempts to prove the existence of their God. These efforts become pathetic when it is understood that the need for proof itself is symptomatic of the human failing of the culture. Aristotle is in, in this way becomes himself the prime mover of the religion and rationality syndrome that continues to plague European theology. You see, so, so again, they become, they become the prime mover. And again, it, they start making circular arguments. They start writing things down. And all of a sudden, you have what we got today. Now, um, let's go to the next section. Judaic heritage. Miss Wheeler, I know you got to have something to say about this part of uh, Um, it was kind of fast as far as for this section, but I think it just kind of goes into the point of what she was saying, bringing into the Judaic, how it was the uh, initial African spirituality of those people, and then how they utilized it and turned it around from their actual beliefs to make it more rational, to codify. Can you, can, uh, you, can you hit me, get that first paragraph for me? Yeah. In Judaism, we find the first conscious, formalized, and institutionalized statement of certain critical characteristics of European culture, tendencies, and values that intensified as the culture became an ever-increasing identifiable ethno-historical entity. This does not include the Kabbalah, mm -hmm. which is a non-European in both spiritual and a racial cultural sense. In fact, a, ca a caveat to this discussion would be to raise the question of to what extent our knowledge of Judaism is determined by the tradition of the Khazars who were converted Jews and their descendants of Askenism and contemporary European Jews. It's interesting that she didn't include a Kabbalah, right? Now, a lot of us be like, oh, 
that's 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 not us, right? They, so she's separating it. She's like Kabbalah don't, don't belong to the Jews. Any anything else? Anybody have any questions regarding this section? I mean, the way you guys were putting it last week, y'all like, oh, we're gonna be breaking the down. This is. <laughs> Why, why did she leave the Kabbalah out? Why did she separate that from... Well, because Kabbalah is actually spiritual and very symbolic. That's one reason. The other, they didn't create it. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I think she's made an argument as the, as the basis of all their religious texts is just taking over the religion that was in place yeah. and giving it back to the people. So none of the religious texts <laughs> that they would call theirs would be actually theirs, but um, a reinterpretation of the religions and spirituality that existed for different peoples at that time. Mm. Well said, I like that. And from what I, from what I got, it's uh, they're, they're having written everything down uh, in, in their holy books. Uh, they managed to separate themselves from everybody else. Um, and create their own, let's say, like a sect, really, which excluded. Well, they created their Asili, right? Yeah, with the, and they excluded everybody else, mm -hmm. you know? And it, and in, in order to be part of that, you have to actually be born into it and not just, you know, like it's, it's different from other religions where you can just join in. Well, um, it, it says here, written codification is necessary for the development and growth a certain kind of ideology and qual qual quantitatively distinct style of organizing, organization. Not necessarily more complex, but in many ways more oppressive to the human spirit as to force human activity to be increasingly technologically oriented. The Kemai po possessed a system that allowed them to keep written records to thousands of years before the Hebrews. Mm -hmm. They also had a larger and more technologically ac accomplished culture. And for these reasons, the Kemite might at first appear to be a theological um, precursor of the crystallization of, of, Europe of European culture, but they weren't. The Kemetic civilization was sacred based in its religious, more cosmic, mystical and symbolic and in intent. So based, they unified it and y'all could, you could read the next, the mathematical, astrological, astronomical, philosophical knowledge of the Kemites, even the material colossus that was Kemet were produced were products of a total conception of the universe as spirit. So they had meaning to everything they had. So not only it was written, but it became materialized. It be became more materialistic in some sense, right? Where although things were written in Kemet, they, they, taught, they connected everything together. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just words. It wasn't just words. It was... Like they were creating things, but it wasn't for just the king's ego. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they didn't have any like bad kings, but you know, colossal pyramids were just not simply created for the king. There was no king buried in the pyramid. So, I mean, and I think it goes back to what uh, Nayami was bringing up as well, as far as like who, who were they learning from and all the time or at that time of who were their teachers. And it shows that like Plato and other people at the time had to be um, learning from Kemet and other Eastern cultures. And they just took what, what they thought it was like, even in the mysteries, how there's the initiates, I think she, mentions that coming up 
as the group of the uh, comedics that would have that knowledge of spirituality in different levels that you would have to work through to get through those initiatives. Um, they, the European kind of like identified that and saw it like, oh, only a small group, sorry. My uh, son wants to be a part of the discussion, <laughs> but only a small group can rule the larger group. So they saw it as, okay, we should be the ones to keep all the knowledge and we will just control the people and it will go through us because that's how they registered it to be that uh, one person was keeping the knowledge because only they could attain it. Well, the... it, well, it wasn't done for spiritual reasons. Yeah. It wasn't done for... It was done for control. Yeah, it was done for trying to maintain power. Also, they were... They didn't understand fully what was going on in Kemet. Because, I mean, you're talking about 4,000 years before these people these people got there, Kemet was already several thousand years old. So when they did, when they saw what they saw, they're like, hold on, what's, what's this? And they had a tough time trying to understand it. Even, even when they were going to their schools, because they were able to go to schools in Kemet and they were having, Pythagoras had a hard time, you know? And they, they didn't, some, some of the stuff, they were like, us now like why we got to study for so long why we got to do this why we go we question certain we question things that were done in the past without trying to understand why they did it right because we we're looking at it through contemporary lens yeah. you know and maybe in the understanding of why then you understand what's happening it was it oppressive or not you know sometimes we say oh that's oppressive why did they do it? Is it really oppressive? You know, and then we, you determine whether it is or isn't. But it, it, it gives you a deeper understanding. Like it, it's like the like the argument she makes. We got to understand the reality. We got to pull back the curtain and not deal with the appearance or be comfortable with surface information. Because when we just de- when we just scratching the surface or dealing with the tip of the with the um what they call a glacier in the water, if you ride if you driving a, a ship, you can't be just looking at the <laughs> at the tip of the iceberg. You kind of gotta now deal with your imagination and, and just imagine how big this glacier could be when you're maneuvering in the water where you see icebergs. So in a way, you got to be now intuitive. You, it forced, the situation forces you to be intuitive. And what happens is, in actuality, the more spiritual person will probably succeed in navigating better than someone who will be like, oh, my God, and get nervous because they think it's impossible. Yeah. You know. So that's the... Um, Anybody else have anything to add to that? There's a, on the page 119, the last paragraph, mm-hmm. within the European context, culture and law are reified and therefore through writing, this keeps coming back to writing, as long as you can write it, it's, you know, uh, writing are deified. Religion has greater force is truer because it is codified in writing. Starting with other presuppositions, however, it would seem that it is only as laws become alienated from the human spirit that conformity to them requires that they be put to paper. So it's the same. Remember that argument that you were making with when we talked, you, you, you brought up the 11 Mama. Yeah, mm-hmm. the the eleven um not law. I don't like saying laws of Ma because it, that's not it. It's the um negative confessions mm-hmm. versus the uh, ten commandments, mm-hmm. right? And so remember we were talking about those differences. That's basic. That's the same thing here. You know, it becomes more like this is what you need to be doing. Yeah. 
more than a true understanding. So really, they don't need you to understand. They just need you to do what the book says. Mm -hmm. the, what the book says. That's why I tell, I tell people all the time, read the Bible. You know, because people are like, oh, but the book, the book, but they don't read the, their own spiritual text. If you read it, the Bible takes you out of the Bible. <laughs> if you read most spiritual texts, you be like, okay, there's there's more to it. You got to connect everything. But most people are into the commandment, like, oh, I need to follow this. I need to do that based on what it, this paragraph. They're not looking at the whole. Mm -hmm. And these texts weren't written. They were separate books. You know, they're not written in like in an overall context. So it also, it also takes the abstract. I made a note to myself here that the abstract now becomes concrete because they've written it and they've the, done exactly the, what they want you to, to know. That's one way she put it or the appearance is reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is where they create this false sense of um, superiority, right? We're the chosen ones. So because we're the chosen one, I have the right to your land. Mm -hmm. I have a right to do this. I, we're the chosen one. I have the right to kill mil millions of buffalo and take your land. I have the right to give them smallpox. I have the right to do endless wars because of the axis of evil. You see where you always have this good and bad component. And so the other is the bad. How, when you know when you create this dichotomy of good and bad, it's not the one who created. They, they're looking at themselves as good. I want their land, and then they say, "No, we're good." Like God, God gave us permission. Yeah. So they, you get to define what is good and bad. So that's the thing, you know. Once you are the, the person who makes the definition, then you can place yourself on whatever side you want. You know. Yeah. Anybody, anybody else? Because there, there now comes monotheistic ideas and the exception of European cultural chauvinism. You know, this is where you can start declaring war on people, right? <laughs> you guys understood this section? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How they create this is where they really dig in with the good and the bad, the Jews and the Gentiles, you know, crusading roars and all these things. The last paragraph on page 121. For the Jews who did not profess the one God ideal, those who worshipped images were in fact irreligious. It was in most impious and immoral to worship many gods. Moreover, it was stupid. It was backward. And therefore the violent hostility towards all other religions was not only justified, it was morally compelling. And here we find the first concrete statement of what can be called the dichotomy of European chauvinism, the evolution of which we can trace historically and ideologically, setting the tone for Crusades, war, war on on everyone and everything that's not that is different. Or even if, let's say you don't accept their ideology, then you're different. You're heathens. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, then it also goes on to page one twenty two. To be Jewish was to not be be not only special and chosen, but also religious and therefore culturally superior in an evolutionary sense. This is a whole discussion <laughs> by itself. Yeah, I mean, th that page 122 pretty much break the, the dichotomy down in terms of Jewish mm -hmm. and the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. But anybody, do y'all understand that? Or we, or should we move on? Yeah. 
So hence, you know, they create this Asili, right? That is manifested on <laughs> manifesting war against people that are different. It allow is the reason why when they went to Africa, instead of integrating with the rest of humanity, they chose to be different, to separate. Um, you know, I don't know what's wrong with them. If I was a European dude, I'll be like, wow, they're a beautiful woman. I'm gonna stay here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they did. They chose to. They they had this fear. I mean, how many of you heard of Francis Quest Wilson? Were you know like. Mm -hmm. She talks about fear of genetic annihilation and stuff like that. ISIS paper? Yes. Go mm -hmm. ahead, Glenn. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Break it down. And, uh, I, so I've listened to a lot of her stuff, but I'm more into, um, are you familiar with Nelly Fuller? Yes. Uh, I got his book, so I'm um, a little bit more into it his stuff than I am with uh, Francis, Francis Quest Wilson. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could you could talk about Nelly Fuller then. Uh, you go into like the, what is it, the uh, nine areas of uh, people activity. Uh, what is it? Uh, economics, education, entertainment. I forgot the other one though. Labor, law, religion, politics, and how it all come together. And if you don't understand that, you would never understand white supremacy, racism. What's the gentleman's name? Uh, Neely Fuller Jr. Neely Fuller. Thank you. Um, well, well, that's that's the whole, like that's the same argument she's making. You got to understand, like all the thing, all aspects of what. So she's breaking down their origin in the beginning and the manifestation of these ideologies and how they got together. And she's going from the beginning. Um, in some ways you have to do homework because she mentioned like Michael Bradley and Iceman Inheritance. I actually have the book, um, but Iceman Inheritance talk about, is a Canadian guy actually that wrote the book. And um, it was forwarded by Dr. Henry Clark, by the way. And he, he talks about how, how they came, you know, how their aggressiveness and sex, sexism and all that come about. And so that's th their nature and then what plato does he like kind of synthesize and put all this thing together and then his student does it and then you got groups of people because now people are looking at the greeks to reignite the renaissance to because after the destruction of the of the alexandria the library you know, in a way, Europe went into a dark age. And so they got attracted, you know, um, to the, the classics and they got attracted to the Greek and Roman culture. And, you know, then later they became more Aristotelian in terms of the approach to Christianity, you know. And, um, but that's a, that's 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 coming up in the next one, I believe. The next section. Uh, Iceman Inheritance is a good book to go along with this one. Yeah, she mentions it too. I was thinking of that may be a book that we could read as well. Um, I don't know if it will be the next one or whenever, whatever you know. Once we finish this one, we're gonna talk about make suggestions. Um, Can I read one thing from some out of it? Yes, yeah. Okay. This is something like a little note I put in that book. This is my the Iceman inheritance real quick. It's a um, not intelligence, nor morality, nor spirit, but aggression is, the, is responsible for the white man's superiority. Aggression is responsible for the expansion of Caucasoids, both geographically and culturally at the expense of other races. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. And I mean, the book says a lot, though. But anyway, we're near the time. Um, I think if you guys want to pause here, I think we're not going to finish the section that we read. Did people read, were able to complete the second half or? 
How many people were able to read that sec the 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 whole sections, all the sections? It was an easier read, I know that. So we moved on past where we were supposed to stop. But it was it was interesting reading. So you know, just kind of carried on for a little bit. So I wanna I wanna welcome brother Du Bois. Or is it Dubois? How how you pronounce it? Dubois. Okay, Thank you. Dubois. And um, I want to welcome him. Can you introduce yourself um, to the group? And we'll have the group introduce themselves to you. Uh, I'm Andrew Dubois. Um, I'm from Chicago. And I was invited by um, Ali uh, Kalisha, Kalisha. And uh, I'm just trying to, to catch up with where you, where you are in the book. I've just been kind of skipping around as I've been hearing the pages that, that people are um, referring to. But um, I just wanted to, you know, I just, I, I, I just wanted to make sure that I, I, I tried to get on tonight. And that's why I was just like, you just got to give me a second to, to get myself situated. Right. Well, uh, you know, I was each... sending you, I, I cut many people off the list. I didn't cut you off though. Yeah, because there I, and was, I, it was divine. <laughs> yeah, there were there were people there were people that were not coming in consecutively. I mm -hmm. just didn't. I I knew that you had a Gmail, so I'm like, I know I know some of this stuff must have went to his G his spam, because right. there's a lot of protection now going on. Okay. But we're in chapter two, and okay. we we had a goal of finishing half of chapter two. But okay. it wasn't, it, it's not absolute because our discussion may go longer than that. So we just want to put a go up in front of us just to make sure that we continue reading the book. It's a big book, 600 yeah. pages. And, you know, most people, we chose this book because we understood that this book puts a draw, it draws the line in the sand, mm -hmm. not just for understanding Europe, Europeans versus humanity but also those who are going to be serious about reading the book a lot of people have this book and never read it and, or there's or there's a lot of people that say they have read the book really they skimmed through it and was like oh my god and put it back <laughs> put it down i was like this we're going to read this book and understand it fully no matter how long it's going to take and so um these are the brave folks up here that that chose to join the cause and and now we have we're in chapter two okay. um basically we have videos from our previous discussions those things will help I th did you get the link for um doctors i need discuss discussing the book did that was that the first link? that was the first link yes 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 okay um if you go to, I'll send you the information now that I know you fully get, and I'll send it, I'll resend the information to you okay. and my telephone number. I believe you probably already got that, but I'll send that information to you. And so like that, um, I'm the facilitator, by the way. Of the <laughs> okay. <group>. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so like that, um, you'll be able to catch up. Basically, we talked about, we have videos on the introduction of the book. Mm -hmm. um, we have we have a video pre-introduction, meaning we discuss why we're going to read this book. Then we okay. have the introduction, and then we have video on chapter one, okay. which is extremely wordy. And a lot of people, you know, while they had this book, they had a dictionary and a thesaurus <laughs> next to them yeah. on their phone. <laughs> Yep, yep. Yeah, she kind of she broke us in that now everybody is like, oh, I'm way past the reading <laughs> section. Yeah, but okay. um, we appreciate you coming and definitely I'll keep keep in touch with you and send you information and the okay. videos. And my name is Ra Kepper Me. My, I actually mentor um, Mr. Ali. Ah, and, yeah. Uh, you did a first, great job. When he first came here, you know. He was chilling too much with the Middle Eastern people and really wasn't understanding who he was. Okay. Okay. Well, you did a great job because Thanks. he's he, he works with us with our male mentoring program. Okay. Good. So good. He, 
he's he's uh, very influential with our seventh and eighth grade brothers um, here in Chicago. Well, I appreciate that the that he's passing on the torch. You know, you know, I help yes. him; he help others. That's 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 his payment. He got to help others. Yeah, and that's exactly what he said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, everybody else, we're gonna start from Sunshine. Sunshine, can you quickly introduce yourself? And um, then after everybody finish introducing themselves to, um, is it Dr. Du Dubois or Mr. Dubois or <laughs> Brother Andrew? Yeah, like, Brother Andrew, just don't, I, call brother. Me late for, just don't call me late for supper. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Brother Andrew, I'm Sunshine. I'm in Toronto. I'm part of the um, African Canadian Heritage Association. I'm a member there. And um, I joined the book club just to build build on my knowledge, build on understanding. That's a very active group, by the way. Spunky people. <laughs> the Buckus family. Okay, my name is Eugene. Um, I don't know if I Ra calls me Cool Breeze. I have no idea why. <laughs> smile, he, smile. He, he, he does. He does. <laughs> Trinidadian. He know what I'm talking about. <laughs> But um, we're a member, a, a member of this team here with my wife, um, and we, you know, we linked up with Ra to do some some work on a project we were doing, and and this is just an extension of that. You know, we just kept the connection, and it's good being here with with like-minded people. Yeah, you know, we, yeah we did a video explaining Kwanzaa. Um, Veronica, when you you could tell him where to reach that video once we reach you. Go oh, ahead, Veronica. I'm, I'm, I'm the other half of oh, this. Because he, 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 I'm sorry. He said the wife. I thought he had it all covered when he said the wife. Let me stop putting a fight between y'all marriages. It's fun, though. No, no, no. It's between me and you. <laughs> so, no, no. So, my the, name is. The boy, this is Cold Breeze. He's Cool Breeze. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm the other half of Cool Breeze. Ra likes to call, he's giving me the name Cold Breeze tonight. But um, anyway, so yeah, so we're all part oh, of the same organization. Hot Breeze. Huh? Hot Either breeze. one, Hot Breeze. Hot Breeze, Hot Breeze is better. Um, yeah, so we're also part of the organization, the African Canadian Heritage Association that Sunshine mentioned. And yes, we got sucked into this with Ra after <laughs> we did the video. <laughs> so yes, and it's a good, good suck in. Because it's actually yeah. a very good pause. Pause. Today. Huh? Huh? No, when you say it like that, you gotta put a. You gotta say pause. That's how the young people say it. Oh, the young people. Well, yeah, you know, they they say pause them. whenever. <laughs> you don't be saying good sucking over here. You gotta pause. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Desenia. The young people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, uh. So yes, my name is Dulcinea, and this is my husband, JB Jabalani. Uh, we get we got the information through the House of Consciousness as far as joining this book club. So um, I was very interested after watching the video and her breaking everything down as far as to read it, and it's been very exciting so far. I didn't know how it would be, but I'm really enjoying the book, and it's helping me with kind of just going on a lot of the stuff that I thought I knew in different all ways. Of, I was all still... this time I thought was my looks, all these women joined. Was... <laughs> right? But I'm like a lot of those European concepts, I would say that I adhere to. So it's just waking me up as well to get rid of the, a lot of those concepts. But you had to say, babe. I'm the African half. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. My wife is, a, is Nigerian, brother. <laughs> yeah. I'm from Zimbabwe, born and raised. She's born and raised too. Yeah, so that's what I said. I'm the African half. Yeah, he's the African half of me. I'm the I'm the transatlantic half. Oh, you said half. half. My bad. Yeah. My bad. And he's the African half. No, she's African too. <laughs> right. But I am African too. But we have a lot of transatlantic halves and <laughs> right. <I love> this <laughs> and the original. <laughs> and then, yeah, I missed that day because uh, Robin was in the building. JJ uh, Jr. is back home, so. <laughs> oh yeah, he came. To yeah, be a part of the intro, the yeah. but now yeah. he's away. But he would have said, "Hey, but that's Jay Day." <laughs> yeah, y'all saw. Him. He was there for like a second, but yeah, I'm just, 
I was listening a little bit today's discussion. I'm 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 a little sad I missed out. It seemed like a really interesting one. Well, we haven't finished the section, so we're gonna we'll talk next week and I expect more. So y'all better have some comments and more comments and less questioning asking me if the group no, like I, I really like today's section because of um the whole Constantine part in his kind of little genius. Well, we haven't got the Constantine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we uh, yeah. The Constantine. No, we oh, haven't, God. bro. They are. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for Constantine. I'm like, that's my so guy. <laughs> they haven't reached Constantine. <laughs> we haven't yeah, reached Constantine. A... <laughs> Buntu family? Miss Miss Fire, look at that. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. Okay, I was supposed to do it. I mean, yeah, I made this my wife Tanisha. Uh, we've been enjoying the the, uh, the read. Uh, we both growing in our African, trying to synthesize our African lives in this European world. And this is a good book to 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 read to really. Um, help you understand what what we're doing in this world, in this Europeanized world, how we function. You know, people tell us we're Africans, but they don't really give us the idea of how to be African. And and identifying what is European is, is a good way for us to, to develop our Africanness. And so that's why we enjoy this book club. Mrs. Ubuntu? Yes. I don't want to make the mistake of ignoring you because he said that's my wife and <laughs> <laughs> no you're fine I asked him to introduce us <laughs> no 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 we want to hear you because you uh, you spicy you you no longer get those privileges girl you try to put me in your <laughs> argument no way <laughs> no way Th these um, two couple here fight and then she she's trying to say like make me the authority i like that's a logical fallacy you ain't using me it wasn't a fight it was a debate that's usually how we talk it usually turns it, out it, it's a fight when you use the logical fallacies a, a debate <laughs> is a more <laughs> no that that was a fight that was dirty play she like she was gonna use the whole book club on him like come on <laughs> um i i enjoy well it's it's his world or his book club and he asked me to join because we're like he just mirroring what he said we're trying to raise a family that is very 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 african centered we have six children <laughs> and so um under seven so you know we're trying to build a legacy that's way different than how we were raised and so i really enjoyed this book i really really enjoyed this conversation even though rod does like to pick on me but it's okay <laughs> i really really love linda i tell her all the time I now i see the fire you talking about because i i pick on linda's <laughs> and she I, and I love it she she holds her ground and i, I respect that and it's just but it's listen, beautiful it's respectful hey guys you see how they she's holding these ladies are trying to hold on to their de delusion. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, we're, I really enjoyed this book club. I love we're dealing with reality, it. not the appearance, but the reality. <laughs> like the book says. Yes. <laughs> yes. Veronica? Well, I am a member of the ACHA, a fantastic group molded me, shaped me to what I am today. And I'm dedicated to the next generation, which is why I'm here, in order to teach, in order to be able to pass on the legacies of our ancestors, I have to be knowledgeable. I have to know, I have to understand how I think so that when I'm, you know, interacting with them, with them and I'm passing on information, I can pass on the same awareness to them and prepare them for the future. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Well, and, and uh, I have a and I have a petition for Veronica to be uh, uh, a member of Sesame Street because she, <laughs> she's good in doing those those workshops. Oh, <laughs> yeah. When you when you see the Kwanzaa video, she's dancing. She got her. Uh, 
elderly mother are even grooving. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yep. My my lovely oh. wife, Mrs. Santana, show yourself. Oh, okay. Well, I had to turn off my video because I couldn't use my laptop. I mean, use my PDF with my video at the same time. It was kind of like interfering with it. So that's why I did not show my face today. But uh, yeah, I am Yemi from Nigeria, originally. Maritva. I initially joined, joined the book, book club just to challenge myself. I don't read, except if I'm, going, if I'm in school, that's the only time I read. So I just joined it to challenge, to challenge myself and so far. I'm getting a little bit more understanding of how the world works. And yeah. Mr. Glenn, your last. I want to, I want to ask me a question afterwards. And also, Miss Wheeler, your husband, remind me just one question because you're coming from the continent and we're talking about these things. And how does that tally with how you grew up? And yeah, but, then yeah, but after, yeah. Hey, Glenn, I thought yeah. you said your wife was going to join you. She just picked me up. <laughs> she was at work. She was at work. We headed to Walmart right now. Yeah. But she's she, she listening. She listening. She share listening the, right now. Share the videos. Be careful because we be lighting up fire here with relationships. <laughs> okay, because she, she's like Linda's. <laughs> <laughs> Why is everybody picking on me tonight? I don't know. So, hey, hey, Eugene, this is the young version of you guys. <laughs> He's cool breeze. <laughs> and now she, you got a you got a younger cold breeze. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Glenn. All right. Well, my name is Sean, uh, aka Young Cool Breeze. <laughs> and I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and I this is my second uh, time uh, with the book club, and it's been cool. I had this book for about a year, and I've been saying I was going to read it and read it, then I'll buy something else and read that book and then keep skipping over it. So it's a good thing that um, I came across the book club through my share, and it's helping me to come out of my shell. I'm kind of shy a little bit, and how I don't know. It's how much? Really cool. How much dust? How many times you had to wipe the dust off of your book? Like to... uh, it was a couple, a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a really good book so far, and I oh. brought out my etymology dictionary as well. <laughs> oh yeah, words, I don't oh, know. yeah, wow. uh, yeah but it's a really good book, and I appreciate being here. Well, brother Andrew, oh. this is the this is the family. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna share my number with you and okay. um, contact info. I'll email you some extra stuff that we had. Um, I'm not. Did, if you haven't read the classics, uh, I'll send you a brief summary on Plato um, this okay. week and so like that. You, because Plato is like a main one of the main characters that she uses mm -hmm. to formulate her argument. Okay. Um. So there's some references that people may not have. I, I'm not. You know, I'm not sure. I mean, you may have those references, but overall, I have, I have, um, I have some of his works. I have some of Aristotle's, and okay. uh, and I also um, read um, George G.M. James' um, Stolen Legacy and right. how he talks of um, Plato, Aristotle, and yeah. um, the other um, Greek philosophers that that came to commit and usurped the the information okay so you make, pretty much then you don't you really don't need a summary then once you familiar if you're familiar with these arguments that they've been making mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and also um i have a pdf if you need the pdf or if you want to share it with somebody else i have the pdf of this book so like that oh. if people you know, a lot of people can't find it or can't read the book. He has it. There you go. I'm saying for other people, if he wants it, I could send it to him where he could share it with other people. Is your the one with the K or the C? That was a <laughs> a whole ar argument that we had over here. The, the, the K or the C? 
in what? Africa, African, okay. where it says African Center. African Center. Oh, oh okay. so you, it's okay. a new one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because my mine's is the older version. And you see, she spelled it with a, uh, with a C. Okay. Uh, well, when you say older, you're talking about you got yours in the 80s? I got mine in 2000. Okay, because I, I want to say I got mine in, in the, uh, what you call it, like around 97, 99? Well, I'll tell you. Hold on. No, Let me I, see. Bought, I got I bought this in 2000. Okay. Yeah, this is 94. 2014. First. Oh, it was different publications. So if you got the African World Books. Yeah, yeah, you got you got the 2007. Yeah, your publication is different than my publication. Right. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. So maybe that's the difference. We thought <laughs> one was older than the other. Yeah. It's four different publishers. Some more afrocentrically focused than others, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I'm looking forward to being a part of this group. Uh, it's a very lively group, I see. Uh, <laughs> you uh, you haven't seen lively yet. <laughs> <laughs> Last week was lively. <laughs> okay. Brother brother Andrew, understand that's coming from the person we call Cole B. <laughs> <laughs> Duly noted. Duly noted. So is she, you see how spunky she is? Yes, sir. That's lively. <laughs> so so right. can I can I go back to my question and just go to ahead. get a sense of what just you know because it's interesting because all of the statements that we're talking about, whenever I'm in Ghana, Ethiopia, whatever, the thinking isn't this. So I'm just wondering if you already had that mindset or if this is all as it is to some of us. Hold on, hold on. You gotta explain that a little further because. When you say mindset, what you're referring well, to? Well, what, what I mean is we, we, we're studying this book or we've studied other forms of African culture here in North America, right? And UK, mm -hmm. I suppose, because, you know, that's where I was from. But so, we, so when my first trip to Africa, I went thinking to Ghana. We're doing all this here. You go to Ghana or whatever part of Africa you go to, and you, you assume that people, it, naively, that people over there are aware of, and I'm being very generalized here, are aware of what we are talking about, not to the well, depth. Well, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's something different that you're saying, right? Because mm. we're, what we're discussing is a African-centered worldview, not, the, not culture, right? Okay. But I mean... Uh, yeah, but I'm just saying. So, so like, day, so the people over there thinking the Africans in Africa think a certain way. Maybe don't talk about the book. Just talk about our enlightenment on this side of the world. And my first, a lot of a lot of us who went were sort of surprised that some of what we took for granted that we are understanding about us as African people. It's it's not. The, the stuff that we think we're going to go over there and experience is not what we end up experiencing or the understanding of who we are as African people isn't the same. Babe, do you we understand what she's asking? Concept, right? Well, basically, the way I grew, I grew up like now, I was born in the 80s, like the early 80s, but I, my family did not like my parents did not like teach me like my tradition basically, like right. my religious tradition, like they completely went off the road with it. So it was when I met Ra that was telling me that, you know, I've been taught wrong, even 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 though I was African. Mm -hmm. I don't know more about my own culture, but I wasn't. I was raised like with some values, go to church every Sunday, 
and stuff like that. So we do not really talk about the Ifa tradition or the olden like what they practice in the like mm -hmm. practice in the um back in the day. Mm -hmm. so what was it? That, Their Baptist. I found that to be so weird because Baptist comes from slavery over true. here. It's spiritual too. Yeah. Well, that's interesting because so now people are about his black. They, they all they all like westernized like if you go to nigeria now you're gonna like it like in the not even in the village where my, where my the town that my mother lives in mm. they have a white jesus on, on the billboard mm -hmm. i'm like Jesus was a black man. If you read Revol if you read the book of Revelations, it tells you that. But for example, my, my, my mother, when my mother was here, I was watching, I was watching Agu and you know Chad and Santos all the time about mm -hmm. religion and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I, I don't get the word because. I, have not, I don't have my two cents to it. I just watch and listen. They're not even Africanizing but, the religion. That's how. That's how it is. The religions have turned like into an like into an European mm -hmm. European religion. Basically, mm -hmm. they think that the white man is better than them yeah. themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? That's what it's supposed to do, though. That's what religion is supposed to do. That's what's killing. Well, them. well, well. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's what they're the they Isili in the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it's what we're reading about. Mm -hmm. Control. Mm -hmm. The imagery. Yeah, all it, of that. it has a lot yeah. of control over there. A lot of control. Hey, JB. Yeah. Do you, do you understood the um Linda's question? Yeah. Uh. So kind of just um. I'm guessing it's. It's more so how we, because um, I know she used the word mentality, so I guess she was kind of trying to see our world view as opposed, because um, I, like I was in Zimbabwe for until I got to about 15 and I've been in America for about 18 years now. That's similar mm -hmm. to my wife too. Me too. Right, so, so when I was younger, like um, my family was a mixture of like one side was well off, the other side wasn't. And so, um, I like my entire schooling life was in boarding school. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. which means so they're Jesuits, school, right? They're Jesuits. Uh, it depends what school you go to. So, but we have um, because I went because I went to a Catholic school, I went to a Baptist school, and I went to a uh, a Methodist school. Right, so that's how they indoctrinate us to be in with yeah. like you, you go to schools that are owned by religion, and so yeah, the Catholic ones are you normally have Jesuits. To go to that religious practice because you were at their school mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right and so they start with that but um for the most part like the way we think about things that there are nuances of certain things like um i'll tell my wife like it's i find it weird the word cousin right we always talk about this a lot of, like you call a cousin cousin and then like the nephew gets all confusing because like i'm not sure who's nephew anyways because i'm <laughs> like to me, to me like my dad and his brothers are all dad. Right. It just depends on which dad you are. Like, there's my dad who's dad. That's so Baba. Then my, yeah. my, my dad's younger brother's Baba Mnini, which is younger dad. Right. Then his older brother's Baba Mkuru, which is older dad. Right? right. So, therefore, all my, what you guys call cousins, are actually my brothers and sisters. <laughs> right? So, it's... It, so my family's really, really big. We we don't call them cousins. That's that's we were that that's something that was imposed, like because right, even, now, even 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 um like how we call each other, hey brother, hey what's up, sister? It comes from that same that same lineage, right? right? Of that recognizing that example. we're all family, right? And so like there's that, and then like um. It, I, the, I guess it just, I've seen a lot more, the, the family size, like when I go to family gatherings, it's a really small family. You know, like when you yeah. say, because where I'm from, you feel like it's a family gathering, I tell you, it's, like, it's going to be 500, 2,000 people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you don't know, <laughs> it's going to be someone there. Everybody's your uncle and your auntie. 
Yeah. Right. It's, it's, I'm going to meet a new Everybody's uncle at every party. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, it's a new uncle, new auntie, new new somebody. You have this new yeah. family every time. Yeah. And, and even if they're not blurry, they, they're still your auntie. They're still uncle. Your yeah, because yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like the, the, the neighbor, who, my mom's neighbor for 10 years, that's my auntie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, a, a matter of fact, Ali calls me uncle. Mm -hmm. And he was going to call me Baba. I said, listen, out of respect for your father, call me uncle. You know, because, <laughs> I, you know, his, his father has a Western education. So I, even though he's Moroccan and, and actually Southern Moroccan, so he's even darker than Ali. Um, he's, I, you know, we talk about it where you know, he calls me uncle. And it's like, and to be honest, we have a father-son type relationship because I'll do anything for him. No, but I think that's a, a, a African thing mm -hmm. because even in the Caribbean, we call uncles, like, it, it doesn't matter. Like, your uncle could be somebody who is close to the family. They would also, you would also refer to them as uncle so-and-so, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Close members of the family. A lot of respect as well, right? You always have respect for your And we, we kind of use the godfather thing too for people who were like Christians. We like, oh, that's my godfather. or mm -hmm. And like the closest people that are not your family are your, they're your family anyways. Mm -hmm. But in the streets, we like, hey, what up, brother? Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, what up, sister? Mm -hmm. Actually, I was thinking of, of when you talked about your family gatherings. Um, it made me think of when we got married, and we, we one of the one of the, the struggles that we had was who do we invite to our wedding? Because we we had, we paid for it ourselves, so we we had a we put everybody's name, everybody, <laughs> even the ones who couldn't come, who couldn't afford to come because we were in Canada. And then we go, oh, no, 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 we can't afford a lot of people to come. And then we narrowed it down to the bare essentials. Because he's got a huge family. All, a lot of them are here. And a lot of my family are all over the place and in Trinidad. And we knew some of them couldn't afford to fly. So we said, OK, let's cut out the ones that we think can't afford to come. And we made the list like 50. But you know what? It's bad because in the West. Wait, and then... We had a sleep on it and we said, no, we got to invite everybody because whether they can come or not, at least because you know what? You can't not invite them because they will be pissed <laughs> that you didn't invite the, the, the closeness of all the people. Evil eye will be on you like. Mm. <laughs> and, and you know what happened? We, when we got married and we didn't know, now I'm thinking about it. We were very Afrocentric in our approach because we then decided, sod it. Everybody's coming. My family who I hadn't seen, I'm the only one in my family here. All of my, uh, my, my cousins and aunts and whoever could come early came and they all helped to make the food for the wedding. His sister did all the food and we were all there helping. Which make it cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. We never went on we never went on honeymoon because we said, so this is the Afrocentric part. People have paid tons of money to come for our wedding. How can we flip off on a honeymoon and leave them here? So we actually never went on honeymoon. We spent the next two weeks taking people to Niagara, renting buses. We had the best time. And we said, this is what the wedding, this is what our marriage is about. It's about yeah. respecting family. And the other thing I was going to say was um, the, the people that came, all my old aunts who I thought could not afford it, they were, they were here. But it was really a connection of people. And it was the best thing. We didn't even know the people who was going to come to yeah. the wedding. One of my aunts, this is very African. One of my aunts said, oh, Lindis, um, some friends down the road from where they live in Trinidad suddenly appeared in Toronto and said, oh, can they come to your wedding? And I go, oh, if, I was a, if we were not the way we were, we go, my God, we have 205 people. Now we have 207. How are we going to feed them? We just said, let them come. Hmm. And I go, that was like, I mean, we tried to make it Afrocentric, not knowing what Afrocentric was, but it actually was Afrocentric in our approach, even though we didn't quite know what yeah. we were doing. So I have to, that made me think of that story when you talked about 
2,000 people coming <laughs> <laughs> for a family gathering. Yeah, because um, like uh, there's certain uh, events um, like um, a birthday, like a, a birth, let me say a birth, a wedding, a death, right? Those are like life big celebrations. Big, big yeah. celebration. so it, it's not it's not us celebrating. It's exactly. the whole the whole family. The whole family is the whole village. Yeah. Right. So that everybody who's going to be affected by their life, like we got one more person in the village, we lost one more person in the village, or we married in another person in the village. So it's always that that whole mm -hmm. celebration about. So mm -hmm. it's, it's it tends to be big. Expect to have people you didn't invite there. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. so there's aspects of the culture that, regardless of the outside influence, that stayed, that stayed. within the culture yeah. still. Right. And yeah. um, because they, the, they call those Africanisms. Yeah. Like and the, the United States, like, you know, uh, you say you wool off, right? You know wool off. You speak wool off. You said you was half wool off. Who's half wool off? No, I thought you said you were half wool off. Me? Oh no. Um, what my family. My family is uh um my dad is uh Karanga, which is a tribe that's like half Debele, half uh Shona and Debele's are like oh. former Zulus. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, but um I'm uh, my mom is uh uh Zizuru, I'm Karanga as far as tribes go. Oh, I must have misheard. <laughs> I thought you was wool off. How about to because wool there's off. a lot of, it, we use a lot of wool off word in America that yeah. we don't know about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh no, like um I'm not sure because I keep telling you, like one of the things I learned back in the day is like there's like um a, a commonality of language across Africa. Mm. Yeah. So there's certain things like like you know, like um I think one of the words I'm for sure is like nyama. Nyama, wherever I, most places I go in Africa is gonna be meat. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah um, or mukaka. So some kind of random mukaka or kaka or something like that. That's gonna be milk. You know, so it's like the, from that I learned like, okay, cool. We there might be a um a linguistic relationship across there, the world. there is right, some, so, some people say Bhutu languages and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, Bantu, yeah. So yeah, Bantu. That, Next. Yeah, so we um we a lot of us think that same thing. Like, no, it's, that's this, a start, right? Because right, um the one of the reasons because like my cousin who speaks Swahili, he's from Kenya, and then I, you know I'm from Zimbabwe. I don't speak Swahili, he doesn't speak Shona, but there's things I can say, and you okay, cool. Based on context of just hearing what he one or two words, I'm like, okay, I kind of know what you guys are talking about, yeah. when I have no idea what y'all saying. Yeah. <laughs> right, <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so it's it's things like that, and then um. One of the things, like, I guess, like, Zimbabwe, we're from, um, they're, they're big on humility and stuff. So one of the things that, like, we're supposed to do, like, when someone comes to your house, the first thing you're supposed to do is give them a glass of water. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Before I talk to you, before I say, how is your life or any of these things, I just give you a glass of water because you came from, you know, you traveled a long way. And right. that's part of right. the yeah. That's like culture. We do it. Same, same thing. thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Sometimes it's <laughs> yeah, that's, it's not just water, it's liquor. Yeah, in the Caribbean, yeah. it's, it's a drink. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. but it, it, I mean, it's generally the idea is just something to drink. But like, right? you want to get us? It made it that way until like my baby shower and everything. The, the young people got gathered and they're the drinking ones and the old people are in another room. I had to go back yeah, and forth, yeah, you know, yeah. between the old elders that want to, you know, play with the baby bump and all this other stuff. And then they're... They're in there drinking, and, having fun. <laughs> I don't know, but we like we've been taught not to eat alone. Like in my job, like the the Wazungas used to be like, like yo, why? Like he's sharing his food. Some of them even didn't like the fact that I share my food, or if I buy food, I buy food for all everybody. I'm not gonna let a kid be watching me. Right. Um, some of the kids were like, some of the Wazungas would buy food and eat in front of the kid and not care. And I'm like, dude, that's so bad. And um, you notice the cultural differences, like, you know, the moral difference, like they, they would eat in front of a kid, you know, who don't, some of them don't have their families and stuff like that. They're basically living on campuses. And One of the things with ACHA is when we were in person, remember Veronica and um, Sunshine? It's a communal feast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was where communal meal. Yeah. communal meal. Everybody sat around and shared a meal. And 
the interesting thing with that was some of the children who were picky eaters in their home mm -hmm. became less picky because they were eating communally yeah. and just saw yeah. generational you're gonna follow the crowd i mean the kids are sponges they they're gonna mimic what they see right and no matter like there's been times like if like we deal with, we were dealing with students that were um you know had problems emotional problems um psychological problems and physical problems mental physical problems and so like if like the way we behaved if they know you're like you you like if if your behavior is off they're gonna be off yeah yeah and yeah. so they, 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 they were they'll be surprised they had this little kid who was like five years old and I didn't even know he was so I called him Dennis the Menace because I didn't know I found out later he was like a Dennis the Menace mm -hmm. and I was shocked I'm like but he doesn't do that to me like immediate when I first met the kid you know um everybody was like babying him babying him babying him it was time for him to go to sleep. So I, I, I pointed to the staff and I'm like, you, you, you get out of here. You go to sleep. He immediately went to his room. And then when, um, you know, when he wakes up in the morning and I didn't tolerate like certain things, but it was like, for me, I look at these kids like if they were mine, right? Mm -hmm. These people let, they didn't brush their, these kids' hair or the teeth whatever they allowed i'm like nah yo you can't be doing those things this is somebody else's kid and that kid will run through those people like but it, and then they, guess what they do then they try to use you they'll try to they were using try to use me to correct the kid almost i became the boogeyman that's how that's that's the dichotomy of work when we're dealing with wazungas but that, that's not oh, entirely wrong, though. You know, you're supposed to be that when, you know, like you're, you're just another parent, honestly. Yeah. I mean, but that's how I view it. But they, but don't they view probably it were trying to like use it more like good cop, bad cop type of ideology. Right. But, well, well like, the thing is, it puts the responsibility on me for I discipline. And, and not only that, you could be wrongfully accused of something. And because that reputation is there, you know, then you're in trouble, right? Because you're always the boogeyman. It's that psychological trauma on a kid when they're going to constantly, you know, the Wazunga deal with fear. And so they think, you know, part of the how they imply this uh, power structure is you're going to fear it. Like most of us, it you know, if they take away the monetary means of survival, we don't have land. We don't. We're not growing our own food. What you gonna do? You know, you're in the wilderness of North America with no type of survival tools. And if you're in the inner city, you're even in a worse situation. Right. And so they use these mechanisms to continue to impose their will. But anyways, uh, brother Andrew, I know we kind of the introduction went like for half an hour, but we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna blame Linda's and the Buckus family for that one. <laughs> it was a traditional. It was a traditional African introduction. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Never be on time for nothing. We don't deal. We don't deal with it. We don't deal with the TikTok. We deal with it feels about right. <laughs> yeah, that's, on that's, time. That's a on time. I well, we, actually well, like this discussion at the end because it actually sort of consolidates what we're learning in the book and it's it's getting us to learn that, about that's why we cook better. better. We're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. about right. Yeah. <laughs> he always says that he up my cooking. He was like, You needed my African side to uh, <laughs> I, be I, I believe him. <laughs> no, no, she started talking with the ancestors more and I can't even say that. that's what happened. <laughs> Can I ask, it, we're, gonna, we're gonna finish reading the rest of chapter two and we'll try and see how far we get with the discussion next week. I mean, I think whoever wished to finish it, uh, we don't necessarily need to continue until we've 
finish the discussion. Also, that will give time for everybody else who's trying to catch up to catch mm -hmm. up. So, do we get a break then? Like we just reread what we I, I say review, and to be honest, I'm not gonna answer. No question better not be directed to me. Yeah. <laughs> a matter of fact, any question that's gonna be directed to me, I'm gonna direct it to somebody else, and I'm gonna put the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be like I'm gonna, I'm gonna go like this. Yeah. Um well I, I didn't see the name. I just said so we are going to read, finish reading chapter two, and we'll get as far as we get. If if you want to finish chapter two, everybody. go right ahead. I I don't think you you're answering to, raw. I don't think you need to finish chapter two. I think you should review the second half of chapter two again. Because um, we need to chapter discuss that chapter further. One. Chapter one. Second so chapter. Yeah, it's chapter two. Chapter two, the second half of the first part. The one yeah. we read, what, yeah. what's going to yeah. happen? Yeah, the, the first yeah. part was chapter two. Yeah. I mean, reread that. We're, but come ready for a, a deeper discussion on it. Because I don't think we really went that deep into it. Mm -hmm. Um. There's portions of it that was miss it, missing, um, and hopefully the brothers could be close to catching up to us. Okay. All right. Sounds good to me. Y'all good with that, um, Brother Andrew? Right on time. Okay. That's just hey, what I need. Hey, young, <laughs> young Cool Breeze, you cool with that? Yes, I'm cool with it. So we, I'm, I'm, <laughs> We're basically going to pause since we didn't finish the section. You know, Linda's definitely going to read that section so she can be chilling. Like, Yeah, yeah. 17. I want that discussion. So I won't call you cool, um, cold breeze. I just call you brown nose. Brown nose. <laughs> <laughs> call me hot. I want to vote. Hot breeze or cool breeze? <laughs> no. Stand up. Hot breeze. All breeze. I'm voting for me. Hot yeah, all the no, here, I, I, I'll just call you Breeze. <laughs> no, no votes? Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. I'll call you Breeze. <laughs> yeah, Breeze. Okay, right. No, listen, me and Linda's, we like brothers and sisters. We had that play fighting thing. We, we fight all the time. He knows. Even, even in re our conversation has, lasts an extra hour because we're fighting. <laughs> I just don't know to shut up. I need to just shut up, and then the conversation would end so much faster. I'll try that next time, bro. It would never work. You see why we we here, right? We here an extra hour. <laughs> she just happened to have a question. I, she, and guess what, guys? She's the one who put me on the timer. <laughs> So in every situation, there happens to be this contradiction in her part. Like, like, like one time we was arguing about snow and who who does the snow. So then the I'm next not, next not, two the the next two days, I asked, "Oh, um, so who done the snow?" And she immediately knew she had to confess because <laughs> her husband told me I was doing the snow. I said, like, "Okay." Ashamed. I'm not ashamed. <laughs> That's what keeps this conversation rolling, Ra. Even even today, I was like, "Man, you can keep his tea warm." The dude drove all the way, did Ma, all the driving. Why are you giving away my secrets? I'm, tr I'm trying to be. He's supposed to be keeping my secrets. All, all, all I'm all I'm saying is that's the right, reason why we. All of it up. <laughs> All I'm saying is that's the reason we die first. <laughs> <laughs> so, ladies, if you want us to live long, don't do what Linda does. Do what does. <laughs> <laughs> Linda Kubri's still alive because he's a spiritual dude. <laughs> so he knows he's the, her perfect mate. He knows how to handle her. I'm giving people the wrong impression. <laughs> I'm going to cut you off right now. I'm leaving. Bye. See you next week, everybody. You see how she's bull uh, uh, she bullying? She's bullying cool breeze. I'm like, I like... No, but listen. I'm they're cool people. We, we worked on projects together. You know, and they're... Her, Veronica, and um, cool breeze. They're, they're just wonderful people. And you see how supportive they are, right? They come to this meeting 
they do the libations. Veronica is a teacher, so she does a lot of work. And you know, Sundays for teachers are sacrilege. <laughs> this is sacrilege, <laughs> her not doing her work. <laughs> it's like, oh, I better. So they take the time and they put the effort and they also participate. So I, you know, I greatly appreciate them. You know, and so, and I appreciate all you guys for being brave um, <laughs> and the picking up the journey the big of reading this book. But anyways, guys, I want to say Shemem Hotep. That means go with peace for everybody. But Andrew, I'll send you information. I won't forget by Wednesday. Well, I'll send it by Tuesday. I'll do. I'm doing video editing after Mondays and sometime it goes into Tuesday. Okay. All right. Hotep, everybody. Hotep.